So, this is the famous P791 and uh, you can notice that it can lift between 3 to 5 tons of weight that is the desired capacity. I am not saying that the prototype which was built was carrying so many kilograms, I am just saying that the prototype was built for a vehicle which would eventually lift between 3 to 6 tons of weight. Uh, it was motivated by the requirements of the US uh, defense services in Afghanistan. So, they thought it is possible to just transport this big uh, vehicle to directly to the location where we need support troops and you can transport equipment. So, the static lift is 80 percent, 20 percent is uh, actually this is wrong, it is around 60 percent. Okay. So, let us see, let us have a look at this particular vehicle. reconnaissance gathering because you can fly for a very long period of time without refueling. So for this vehicle, we would take off and land, fly for two to three weeks unrefueled, come back, refuel, possibly change sensors, and go back up again. That allows us to have fewer forward troops supporting the aircraft and also uses less fuel in the forward areas. The second mission area is in moving cargo. People like to move quickly as they're transported, but cargo doesn't matter so much. In cargo applications, the hybrid aircraft is really more like a fast ship than a slow airplane. The hybrid aircraft allows us to carry a wide variety of cargoes. As it scales up from its current size to three times, five times, or seven times this scale, the gondola expands so we can carry two to three hundred freight containers at a time. We can also carry tanks, helicopters, and other outsized military cargo. What's difficult about making an airship isn't the fact that you make a bag of helium lift something. That's relatively easy. What's difficult is making it useful. We've worked very hard to try to make this the most operable system possible. What we'd like to do is take this system to a 95, maybe 99% availability rate, much higher than existing airships, and also as high or higher than existing aircraft. Unfortunately, is that like so many projects uh, of the US Air Force, this project was technically successful, but they did not have any funds remaining to execute it. So, simply because of financial reasons, okay, uh, this project has been currently temporarily shelved. But there is a tremendous interest in this capability for other applications, such as transporting huge amount of logs in Canada during winter, where there is a great requirement for transporting heavy cargo 
and the only mode available today is either using trucks on IC roads or very long distance railway which can be very very difficult and uh, hazardous during the winter months. So, some researchers in China are very very proactively pushing the possibility of cargo airships. So, they conduct a seminar once in two years called as airships to the polars or polar airship group. So, when you get a chance please try to search for this particular group called as polar airship group and uh, you will find the University of McGill and uh, some other universities in Canada there are people Professor Barry Prentice, University of Manitoba. Uh, he is very actively involved in pro, uh, promoting the usage, he is an economist, transportation economist, but he is very proactive in pushing the use of airships for large uh, volume cargo.